David Dasi. This meeting is being live streamed. By staying in this meeting, you consent to being live streamed. Anyone with access to the live stream can watch or share with others. Got it. Okay. Let me just see who else is on here. There's Ananta Shesh. He's one of our, our faithful listeners, viewers, followers from way back. Uh, we used to see him. I used to see him in his car, I think, or his truck, maybe driving to work. So uh, this broadcast is not a great visual uh, to watch. You're just looking at an old man in front of a stack of books, which is sort of boring. But you can listen to this broadcast while you're cooking in the kitchen, while you're making belebjimans or uh, simply wonderfuls or rasgouls or uh, whatever your favorite milk sweet is or the deities of Krishna. You can listen to this while you're threading your flower garlands. You can listen to this while you're driving in your truck or in your car. Even Rasananda of Sochi can listen. And even Marie Ugoric of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, in the very heartland of the United States, is helping to moderate our broadcast. And it's good to see you, Marie Ugoric. And um, well, let me just check the Fletcher over here. The era. We have uh, Abhi Ram is on here, maybe from, I don't know if that's the Abhi Ram from Thailand. I met him. He's a good Murdunga man. And then there's Nanda 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 There should be a Nanda 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 Right? Nanda 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 It should be such a beautiful name. All right. Well, I think we're all here. We're gathered. Uh, I ask all of you for your benediction, that I say something useful and worthwhile to the devotees assembled here. Otherwise, I, I really don't have much power of, of speech. I'm not a great preacher and I'm not a great speaker, but uh, I make up for it with a bit of sincerity and, and the study where I lack in talent and uh, passion, I suppose. So we're going to read a little bit from this book, the uh, Prepana Jivanamritam, which has been translated into English as positive and progressive immortality, but also li life nectar of the surrendered soul. And we gave a long talk on the meaning of the the title, if you like, you can go back to the beginning and, and check that. But today we're in the fourth chapter, which is called, um, it's Bhaktivachanamritam, or Words of Nectar from the Devotees. And we're in this chapter called Pratikulya Vivarjanam, or Rejection of the Unfavorable. So as we've seen a number of times, um, there's different, six different ideas about surrender given by Srila Rupa Goswami. He says, um, Anakulyasya Sankalpa Pratikulyasya Varjanam Rakshasya Tadivishva So Gokrate Baranam Tata. Um, so, the six processes of love mean that you should reject everything which is unfavorable to Krishna consciousness and accept what's favorable. And actually, by just by doing one of the different six things that are mentioned, um, you get all of them. So, by rejecting everything favorable, automatically you're accepting everything, excuse me, by rejecting everything unfavorable, you're accepting what's favorable. 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the verse. It's Anukulyasya Sankalpa Pratikulyasya Varjanam Rakshasya Tati Vishva So Koprite Varanam Tata Atmanikshepa Karpanye Shadvida Sharanagati. So accepting everything favorable and rejecting everything unfavorable. So this is a twofold idea. Having confidence that the Lord will grant protection and embracing his guardianship. This is another twofold idea. It's a little difficult to understand. What's the difference between having confidence and embracing his guardianship? Um, I always had difficulty understanding the difference between those two. But one of the embracing guardianship is taking a bigger risk. I have confidence that the Lord will protect me, uh, but am I willing to take some risk? Embracing guardianship means I take that risk knowing that he will protect me. I jump out of the airplane knowing that having confidence that the parachute will work, but I jump out of the airplane uh, taking a greater risk, embracing guardianship is like that. Offering oneself completely, atmanik shepa means complete soul surrender. And, um, and karpanye means humility. So as I'm on the path of surrender to God, I don't become proud thinking, look at me, uh, I have the protection of God himself, I'm surrendering to God. Uh, one needs to be careful about humility. So that's the sixfold process that's being looked at here. In this chapter, chapter four, it's called Sri Bhakta Vachanamrita Mord words of devote, nectar from the devotees, but on the subject of Pratikulya Vivarjanam, rejecting the unfavorable. So in our last chapter, we were looking at what to accept. And we saw that it's important to develop faith and that faith will bring us into contact with the association of devotees, Sadhu Sangha. And that proper sadhu sangha means being a bit selective in terms of the saintly persons that we involve ourselves with, because we're particularly interested in developing love for Krishna or Krishna Prem. So we seek out those bhaktas or those devotees whose lives are saturated with Krishna Prem. And as we do so, as we find those who are more advanced on that path, we'll see that they're in contact with someone still more advanced, and this is the guru. And so we talked about the need for accepting guru, and then gradually guru will take us higher. He will take us up into the higher plane, and then the ontology of that higher plane was uh, given a sort of close scrutiny by Srila Sridhar Marsha, as he points out that above the ordinary concept of uh, merging into the absolute or oneness, there's the idea of uh, heaven. And above these sort of practically mundane ideas, there's Vaikuntha, which is the place of no anxiety or the, the spiritual world proper presided over by Narayana or Vishnu or Lakshmi Narayan in infinite universes of transcendental service to uh, the supreme personality of Godhead in his four-handed form. And above Vaikuntha, there's uh, Dwarka, 
and Mathura, the kingly concept of Krishna. Krishna, as he first appears on the battle of Kurukshetra, the friend of the Pandavas, and then more internally, Mathura, where he's uh, younger. And then still more internally, Vrindavan. And then the higher conceptions of divine love and rasa in Vrindavan and the saying of Raghupati Upadhyay is quoted. That's why I was talking about Nanda Nandana Ananda because the son of Nanda provokes Ananda in Nanda Maharaj, his loving father. And Raghupati Upadhyay, he... He's a great scholar of the Vedas, and he says, well, people talk about Vedic this and Vedic that, Vedic medicine, Vedic astrology, uh, Vedic war, but I'm not so concerned with the Vedas. I'm more interested in uh, Nanda Maharaj. I'm, I'm curious to know who was Nanda Maharaj? What did he do? How did he attain the position that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is playing as a child? in his little back garden. Who is this Nanda Maharaj? And then Srila Sri Ramarsh points out that uh, the summum bonum of Krishna Prem is found in Vrindavan, in the love of the gopis, and of course, Sri Radha and John. And so, to aspire to serve us in that plane, uh, this is what we should concentrate on accepting in terms of anukulyasya, or accepting what is favorable. Um, of course, we color that with a bit of a caveat uh, given by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Puja Laragapat Gaurava Bhange Matala Harichana Kirtana Ranga, that we keep this whole Vrindavan conception on our head. It's a very high thing. It's not to be toyed with. Uh, we should not imitate that. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Our particular focus in this lifetime is on the teachings of Sri Chaitanya and on the kirtan of Sri Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya, of course, being Krishna himself who comes as his own devotee to taste what is loving service to Krishna. God himself is fascinated with the idea of his devotees. And he wants to see, well, what is it like to have such devotion. It appears that the devotees of God uh, are tasting this very high kind of ecstasy. How can I taste that myself? He sees that in Sri Radha, Krishna does. So he comes to this earth as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to introduce the chanting of Hare Krishna, the uh, Hare Krishna mantra as the supreme form of worship. And he practices that kirtan himself. So, puja la ragapat gaurava bhange, matala harijana kirtana range. Here on this plane, we're involved in kirtan. We're involved in taking the holy name. As far as Radha Kund and the gopis and all that, we'll come to that. And these things are also given by Sri Rupa Goswami and his Upadeshamrita, where in 12 or so shlokas, he describes uh, what does that mean? Anukulyasya sankalpa, pratikulyasya varjanam. What is it? What can we accept and what can we reject and what's the higher goal? And uh, in a few short uh, verses, he takes us from. very basic ideas about sense control to the highest uh, concept. And since Sri Ramarsha is sort of enfolding 
these teachings of Rupa Goswami in his discourse here in the Prepona Jivanamrita. I thought it would be interesting to go through this very quickly. There's only uh, 11 lokas. And his Upadeshamrita, which was translated as Nectar of Instruction by Srila Prabhupada, he says, Vacho Vegam, Manasakrota Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udara Pashta Vegam, Etan Vegan Yo Vishaheta Dira, Sarvam Apimam Prithivim Sashishyat. He says, A sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, and the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world. And then in his second verse, he has this, Atyahara prayasas cha prajalpo niyamagraha, prana sangas cha lolyam cha, radbhir bhaktir vinashiti. One's devotional service is spoiled when he or she becomes too entangled in the following six activities, eating more than necessary or collecting more than required, over-endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement, or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically, associating with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness and being greedy for mundane achievements. So, so that shloka will characterize the sort of reflection that Srila Sridharmarsh is giving here on uh, rejecting what's unfavorable. And we'll come to that again in a moment, but let's begin the chapter proper. And Srila Sridharmarsh has composed a verse here where he explains uh, what what do we mean by pratikulya vibharjanam? He says, the principle to reject everything opposed to the service of the Lord and his devotee and to abstain from those things with an attitude of surrender is known as pratikulya vibharjanam or rejection of the unfavorable. Bhagavad bhaktayor bhakte prapate pratikulate Varjate nishchaya pratikulya varjanam uchate. This is pratikulya varjanam uchate. Pratikulya is this. Hmm? Pratikul. Kul, is, it means cultivation. Kul, cultivate. And prati goes against that. So it goes against cultivation of Krishna Bhakti. Hmm? We, we should reject that. Now, he moves on. He gives a, an example. Pratikulya Varjanam Sankalpa Sankalpa Darshaha. He says, here's the ideal. Uh, the ideal of Rejecting the unfavorable was given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself in his Shikshastika. And uh, it's noteworthy that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does not publish a number of books, but he gives us these eight precepts, which are found at the end of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj. Nadanam Nadjanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vajagadish Kamaye Mamajanmani Janmani Shwere Bhavatad Bhaktira Haituki Twai. And this is the second. The, the first of the eight instructions tells us chant Hari Krishna. It's about Sri Krishna Sankirtan. And this one says, Nadanam Nadjanam Nasundarim. I'm not interested in dana. Dana means wealth. Gold, silver, money. Najanam means followers. Nasundarim. Sundarim is an interesting word because it means beauty. But in this context, generally speaking, it means women. Of course, for men, 
it means women, and for women, it means men, or in other words, sex. So, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejects uh, money, sex, and power. Janam, or followers, it means power. Uh, and it's interesting because I remember back in the old days, we used to chant this uh, mantra every day. We would chant this uh, Shikshastakam of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu daily as part of the program. And it would say, uh, I have no desire for wealth or worldly promotion, uh, nor do I desire wife, family, and followers. And, and I would think, well, followers, you know, I don't really have any followers. How could I have followers? But now today on Facebook and uh, Instagram and all these different social medias, uh, one has followers. And people are always checking to see, well, how many followers do I have? Have I surpassed 50 followers? Do we have 100 followers? Do we have 1,000 followers? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says, I don't care about any of that. I don't care about money. I don't care about women or fame or wealth. Or as um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur puts it, Kanaka Kanaki, but Kanaka Kamini Pratishta Bhagani. There's these three ghosts or witches that haunt us, and that's uh, Kanaka, Kamini, and Pratishta. Pratishta means prestige, and uh, Kama, like the Kama Sutra, means sex. So, sex, Kanaka Kamini, money, prestige. These things tend to seduce us away from the path. If you're on the path of surrender to God, uh, you will notice that others have followers. They surrender to God, and then they created their own society or their own temple, and that turned into a business. And now they have thousands of followers, and they make money. And then women become attracted to charismatic men who have followers and money, and pretty soon uh, there's a little bit of sex in the mix as well. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his day, and Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his day, uh, they say, stay away from these things. Uh, dollars, diplomacy, and despotism, Sri the Sri said, the three Ds. Uh, these things seduce us away from sincere engagement in the search for Sri Krishna. Mama Janmani Janmani Shwere. The only thing I want, birth after birth after birth, Bhavatad Bhaktira Haituki Twari, is uh, a Haituki Bhakti. Uh, devotion to God, which is not colored by any sort of mundane desire. And uh, apparently, this is a very simple idea, but really it's very difficult to, to grasp that idea. It's very, very difficult. That's why Srila Sridhar says, uh, Pratikulya Varjana Sankalpa Darsha. He says, this, this is the complete version right here. If you really want to know what does it mean to give up uh, things that are unfavorable, well, what's unfavorable? Money, sex, and power. Those things will drive you crazy. Stay away from that. Uh, the only aspiration in my heart is that in every birth, I may have unmotivated devotion to you. Uh, and then Srila Sridhar he likes to, like a honeybee, he likes to take a little pollen from this flower, a little pollen from that flower, and combine that to make honey and show you. This is not something I'm inventing. Okay, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, my guru, Maharaj, Srila Sridhar Maharaj is saying. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is saying, uh, Anaka, Kamini, Pratishta, Bhagani, avoid these things. But where's that coming from? That's coming from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself 500 years ago. Uh, 
Um, but is this unique? You know, is it that this religion was invented 500 years ago? No. And so he says, here's something similar, a trapi tataiva. Nashtadarme navasu nichaye naiva kama pabhoge, yad yad bhavyam bhavitu bhagavan, purva karmanu rupam, etat pratyam mama bhaku matam, janma janmantare pi, tvat param bo ruha yuga gata nishchala bhaktir ashtu. So he's showing you that what Srila Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving is not outside the Vaishnava tradition, but goes back maybe another 500, maybe another thousand years. In other words, this is part of the perennial wisdom, the perennial philosophy of lovers of God going back thousands of years through time. So he's appealing to the Mukundamala Stotram of Tri Kula Shekar, where this verse is found. And King Kula Shekar, a great devotee of Krishna, he says, O Lord, I have no faith in religiosity, economic development, or sense enjoyment. Dharma, uh, he says, Nashta Dharma, not Dharma per se. Now, Vasud Nichaye Naiva Kama Paboge. Kama means sense enjoyment, boga, pleasure. I have no faith in re religiosity, economic development, or sense enjoyment. Nadanam Najanam Nasundarin. So he's showing a parallel here between what King Gula Shekhar saying 1500 years ago and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, you know. Bhaktivinoda Thakur as well, in recent memory. Oh Lord, I have no faith in religiosity, economic development, or sense enjoyment. May all these things come to pass as they are ordained according to my previous karma. But my earnest prayer is that birth after birth, I have unflinching devotion to your lotus feet. So, Mama Janmani Janmanishwari, Bhavatad Bhaktira Haituki Twai, or as Kula Shekhar puts it, Pad Param Boruhu, Juga Gata Nishchala Bhaktira Ashtu. Now, an interesting point that can be raised in what these two shlokas say is that Kula Shekhar is not absolutely rejecting sense gratification, money, women. He he's just says he has no interest in that. He says, these things may come to pass uh, according to my karma. So he's a king. He has wealth, elephants, armies, a, perhaps a harem of beautiful women, soldiers, ministers, coffers of gold and silver. But he's pointing out these things are not what motivate me. They're not what inspire me. They may come, they may go. So that means, and this is interesting, that you don't have to try to live a life absolutely free from money, from sexual encounters with the other genres you know, with, uh, free from any sort of political power or followers. Um, this will come according to your karma. You'll have the woman of your dreams according to your karma. You'll have certain economic position according to your karma. It doesn't mean that of necessity uh, you must renounce that and go live in an ashram. The word ashram is also interesting because it has a lot in common with the word asylum. Uh, an ashram is a refuge or a sanctuary. I remember when I was a kid, I really loved this one movie, uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I think it has Lon Chaney or Lon Chaney Jr. 
or Charles Lawton, maybe. And at one point, uh, the gypsy Esmeralda is being chased by the authorities for some crime she's committed against the state, and she runs inside the Notre Dame church, and uh, Quasimodo, the hunchback, decides he's going to help her, and he goes up to the bell tower and rings the bell, and he's he's shouting, sanctuary, sanctuary, meaning that in the 1300s, when that story was curtained, uh, there was an old French law that said if someone came inside the church, the law could not pursue them because that was a holy place. And there's a division between church and state and the secular society was not allowed to come into the church to arrest people and uh, exert their authority. So Esmeralda had sanctuary. And uh, my younger brother did a great impersonation of Quasimodo saying, sanctuary, sanctuary. And I like that idea that there would be a place on this earth where you could escape from the mundane law because there was a higher law. So that's sort of the meaning of uh, refuge or an ashram. An ashram is a place where you can go where the ordinary law of society does not pertain. And there you can absorb yourself in prayer and religious practice and study the scriptures and dedicate yourself 100% to God or to devotion or to Krishna consciousness in our case. Uh, so we get this word asylum as well, which is similar to ashram. I don't know if there's any linguistic connection. You can check that out. Shri Sridharmarsh was fascinated by this sort of connection between words. He used to say, is lava love? Because lava burns and love burns. There must be some connection. He said, you look, look for that. Then he came up with the golden volcano of divine love because lava and love, there must be some connection, those two burning things. So asylum, ashram, I'm thinking there must be some connection. People in the United States are upset that so many immigrants come pouring over the border looking for asylum, political asylum, which means something like shelter, sanctuary. But the word asylum also has a kind of a dark connotation in the sense that uh, if you're mentally disturbed, you go to a place where you can take shelter and the doctors will do their best to restore you to some kind of a normal condition or at least a sane condition. We're not really too sure what normal or sane means, but the idea of asylum, it has this curative kind of purpose that when you're in the asylum, you're doing some kind of rehabilitation, but you're not to stay there forever. Once you've been rehabilitated, you can return to normal society. So there are those who can dedicate themselves 100% forever to staying in an ashram. But people like myself have found uh, that it's not entirely practical to live in an ashram for your entire life. I spent somewhere like 15 years uh, living in different ashrams in uh, the Los Angeles Temple, the Laguna Beach Temple, the San Jose Temple, like that between 1975 and 1991. And finally, my life path took me in a different direction. And I find that many devotees uh, are in a similar situation. 
So Kulashekar says, these things come to pass as they're ordained according to your previous karma. It's not possible to maintain uh, a life in an asylum uh, for your entire lifetime. And yet, our aspiration is to develop Krishna consciousness in such a way that we become more and more absorbed in divine love or Krishna prem, life after life. And if that means uh, being involved somehow in the kirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'll accept that. I'll take that. Um, I don't have a particular passion that I need to return back to Godhead now. Uh, I did when I was younger. I thought, when I finish this life, I'll return to a higher domain. But I'm not entirely convinced of that. I think perhaps if I need to come back uh, to inhabit this plane again, if I can get some association with the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Kirtan, I'm, I'll be very happy about that. So here in this verse by Kula Shekhar, we have that Janma Janma Tare P. He says, my earnest prayer is that birth after birth, I may have unflinching devotion to your lotus feet. He's not entirely convinced that he's going back to Godhead in this lifetime. Back in the old days, the preachers would end every lecture with, and in this way, we will go back home, back to Godhead in this lifetime. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Mama Janmani Janmani Shware Bhavatad Bhaktira Hai Tuki Twai. If I can just get it, a spark of real, true, divine love, then it doesn't matter if I come back again and again. The only aspiration in my heart is that in my every birth, I may have unmotivated devotion to you. So Srila Sridhar here is putting this at the beginning of the Bhaktivachanamritam by way of telling you, well, if even if you can't uh, completely give up everything that's unfavorable, by engaging in this process, you're assured of success. You're assured of advancing towards a haituki bhakti. And you can carry a spark of that eternally with you from one lifetime to the next. Then he says, Harisambandahinam sarvam eva varjaniyam. So, as we're starting out on this path, we should do our best to leave to the association of devotees. He says, everything devoid of a relationship with Lord Hari should be rejected. So this is the ideal, again, it may not be entirely possible to comply with everything on the list of things that one must reject. But this is our ideal. Nayatra Vaikunta Kata Sudhapaga Nasadavo Bhagavatastad Ashraya Najetra Jageshu Maka Mahutsava Suresha Loko P. Navai Sasevatyam. This is from the Devas. One should not reside wherever the river of nectarine tidings of Krishna does not flow. If there's no Vaikuntha Kata, you should not be there. You should find a place where there is. Now, by the grace of God, Krishna, by the grace of the Vaishnavas, by the grace of uh, internet and Zoom, we have this facility where we can do some Vaikuntha Kata wherever we sit. But you have to seek out that channel. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, do it. Tell your friends, this is a wonderful Vaikuntha zone where you're protected. It's an asylum. It's a refuge. It doesn't cost any money. Uh, 
Maha Yogi's here once a week. Uh, Rajasundri is here once a week. And it, even if we're not physically present, you can check out the YouTube channel. And by now, there's thousands of videos on bhaktionline.ru. And uh, it's completely free. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to give any money. The only thing that you have to give is the most valuable thing you have, which is your time, your attention, and uh, your faith. Nasadavo Bhagavatas Tadashraya. He says, don't, don't live somewhere where you cannot find Krishna's surrendered devotees. And wherever the grand festival of chanting Hare Krishna is not conducted, even if you're in heaven, now some places appear to be paradise on earth. We here in Mexico, we have Cancun. It's a paradise on earth. But there's no chanting of Hare Krishna there. It's all sex, drugs, rock and roll, cheap liquor, bikinis, uh, good-looking guys with muscles, beach, sunshine, but there's no chanting of Hare Krishna. So it may appear to be like heaven, but in fact, it's a kind of hell. So don't go there. Srila Sridhar Marsh is telling you, stay away. And he continues. This is from the teachings of Rishab Dev and the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, he says, Vyava Harika. Gurvadayo P. Pratikulan Ched Varjaniya Eva. He said, when the traditional guru, Vyavaharika guru, and guardians are found to be unfavorable, they too must surely be abandoned. So I have Instagram, and sometimes Instagram suggests different things. And among my suggestions the other day was a discourse by uh, Krishnamurti. Uh, Krishnamurti was the selected, he was the appointed acharya for the theosophists when um, this theosophist society, which had been created by Madame Blavatsky and Ani Besant, as a sort of a scientific theology based on Hindu teachings, the Bhagavad Gita. They needed an acharya. And they found this young man who was extremely charming and uh, charismatic, handsome and good looking. And they wanted, they appointed him to be the acharya. And he shocked the world by coming forward and saying, I am not a guru. And so later, Srila Prabhupada would lambaste him as the guru uh, who said, you don't need a guru. And he wrote a book saying, you don't need to read a book. Anyway, he popped up in my Instagram feed the other day saying, the most important thing that you can learn is that life has no meaning. And uh, the Hindus invented the idea of Atma, but this is a ridiculous fiction that you should not believe in. So there's plenty of gurus like that, hundreds and thousands of gurus whose deep insight is to tell you that life has no meaning, that the soul does not exist, that there is no God, or conversely, that they are God or that you're God, which is really the same thing. Atheism and nihilism and shunyavad, uh, it's the same as saying, I'm God, you're God, we're all God. Because if I'm God, you're God, we're all God, then the word God has no meaning. And so their goal in life is to render God and the self and the universe meaningless. So these people are to be rejected. Uh, Rashab Dev says, Guru nasasyat svajano nasasyat. Pitana sasyaj janani nasasyat. One who cannot save other souls from the world of impending death. That is, one who cannot teach the path of devotion. He cannot be a teacher 
although he may be called guru. Guru na sasyat, svajana, he can't be your relative. So when family members ridicule Krishna consciousness, well, you, you should take some distance from them. It doesn't mean you need to reject them entirely. It's very difficult to live without your family members. They exert an important influence in your life. Uh, blood is thicker than water. But you have to draw a line and understand when people are being toxic in terms of your faith. So such a person cannot be a teacher, even though he may be called guru. Uh, again, just because someone is designated or appointed a guru, just like Krishnamurti was designated and appointed, that doesn't necessarily mean he has the qualities to give you spiritual guidance. Um, so, just like Jesus Christ, I think there's somewhere in the Bible, Marie Ugoric, she will know. Uh, Christ says, I've come to set father against son, and like that. It's in the Bible somewhere. Meaning that it's very beautiful to have a family. Family is lovely. Children are beautiful. You look at a newborn child and you think, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I just want to serve that, that little baby. But sometimes, as babies grow, they develop bad qualities, or their bad qualities uh, come out. Uh, Adolf Hitler, I'm sure, when he was in kindergarten, he might have been a cute little boy. But later on, he grew up to be a monster. Well, there's not just one Hitler in the world. So... He cannot be a father. He's not qualified to beget a son. She cannot be a mother. She should not bear a child. He cannot be a god. The demigods who cannot deliver others from material bondage are not entitled to accept worship from human society. And he cannot be a husband. His hand is not fit to accept in marriage. These are very, very powerful, strong words coming from uh, Rishabh Dev in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, written hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And Srila Sridhar Maharshi likes parallels. Then he, he gives us another verse by um, King Kula Shekhar from the Mukundamala Stotram. He says, the resolve to reject everything favor unfavorable uh, shown in this verse by Kula Shekhar. I won't read the Sanskrit because we're running out of time, but this is verse 6 in chapter 4. O Madhava, let me not see the unvirtuous persons who are devoid of devotion to your lotus feet. And let me not hear the narratives which do not describe your divine personality. O Lord of the universe, May I never have any contact with those bereft of faith in you. And moreover, lifetime after lifetime, may I never be without the company of your associates who are devoted to your loving service. Well, of course, if you live in this material world, it's very difficult to avoid these people. It's very difficult not to look on their faces. But these quotes by Kula Shekhar, it's a kind of ideal uh, we have to remember that for pure devotees involved in prema bhakti, uh, they enjoy seeing the faces of other devotees, they enjoy listening to them. Whereas the discourses of the non devotees, uh, sometimes it's like eating cardboard. Uh, there was one devotee in Navadvip Dham who used to insist on the same kind of argument with Srila Sri Ramash again and again. And Srila Sri Ramash would answer his questions, but he would keep coming back to the same sort of mundane discourse. 
And at one point, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he just turned to him and he said, you're giving me straw. Like, I can't eat this. Please, you know, speak of something else. You know, direct your discourse in a different manner. Because the devotee could not appreciate that. He was talking to one of the powering pillars of the Sankirtan movement after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, insisting on the same sort of dry argument. Srila Sridhar just said, please, you're giving me straw. So sometimes we get that kind of discourse when sitting with families. Uh, they like to talk about their dog or uh, somebody got a haircut or what kind of shoes are popular now. And for one who is attracted to the nectarine discourses of Hari Kata or Vaikuntha Kata, uh, which speak of our eternal relationship with God, this sort of discourse is very, very dry. And ultimately, we want to try to avoid that. So, Srila uh, Sridhar says, one should also be indifferent toward commonly respected objects. Vad bhakta sharitam patim chulukavat. Your Lord, he says, oh Lord, your devotee sees the ocean to be as insignificant as a palmful of water, the sun as a glowworm, Mount Sumeru as a pebble, a king as a servant, Chintamani jewels as ordinary stones, a wish-fulfilling tree as wood, worldly aspirations as straw, and he even sees his own body as a trifling weight to carry. He knows all objects unfavorable to devotion, as trivia. So, again, in comparison with Krishna Bhakti and Krishna Prem, many of the ordinary things of this world, we can understand they're uh, trivial. <laughs> then he, he quotes from Katyavana, Katyayana, uh, Katyayana Muni, Srila uh, Sridhar Maharaj, Hari, Hari Mukha Sangha Falasyanu Bhuti Swarupam. He says, a realization of the result of associating with those who are averse to the Supreme Lord. So on the other hand, if you're forced to associate with those who are against Krishna, against Krishna consciousness, um, Katyayana Muni says, you should endure the pain of being locked in a cage surrounded by blazing fire rather than keep the distressing association of persons averse to Krishna consciousness. Wow. And then the actual position of the worshipers of other gods. Often we hear, well, you know, we should worship Ganesh because after all, he helped write the Mahabharata. Or, well, we should worship, uh, you know, Shiva out of, you know, respect because he's he's a great devotee of Krishna. But then when you associate with the Shivites, the real Shivites, you find that they don't consider Shiva as a great devotee of Krishna. They have a completely different uh, worldview. So, Srila Sridhar Maharaj here, he, he puts this in here. He says, here's the actual position of the worshippers of other gods. Alingam vara manye vyala vyagra jalokasam na sangashalya yuktanam nana devaika sevinam. The actual position of the worshippers of other gods. He says, better to be embraced by a snake, a tiger, or a crocodile than to suffer the agony of associating with persons who worship the various demigods. And it just says, Keshan Chit, a revered votary. I'm not sure where he gets this verse from. So, this is kind of the section 
where it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So Vaishnavism is monotheistic, and we worship Krishna. The other gods, they play a role. They're there. But the real devotees of Krishna, they're not so happy about worshiping uh, different other gods. You can see that also in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and then Srila Sri Ramarsh comes to this verse that we gave at the beginning of our talk this morning. Bhakti Bhadaka Doshas Tyajya Atyahara Prayasas Cha Prajalpo Niyamagraha Jana Sangas Chalolyan Cha Shadbir Bhakti Vinashiti. So these are the things that destroy bhakti, personal defects that obstruct devotion must be forsaken. But instead of translating this verse, uh, as I did previously, Srila Sridhar uh, just hands it over to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who's written a song. And the song in Bengali is, you know, Atyanta Sangrahe Jayat Sada Chitta Doi Atyahari Bhakti Dehina Se Sangya Poi Prakrita Bashtura Se Bhoge Jaraman Prayasita Haranam Dehina Jan Krishna Kata Chari Jiva Anakata Koki Prajalpita Haranam Abrita Bhakya Koke Bajanete Urasina Karamete Praveena Bhava Rambi Seni Amagrahi Atidina Krishna Bhakta Sangavina Anya Shange Rata Jana Shange Kuvishaya Vishale Vilasevi Brata Nana Stane Brahma Jay Nija Sarta Tare Loyalya Parabhakti Hina Shange Deyanari E Chai Naki Kabu Bhakti Adikari Bhakti Hina Laksha Brashda Vishai Sangsari. So he puts this in Bengali because the readers of, of this book will understand Bengali, but this was translated, I believe, by Bhakti Anand Sagar Maharaj. And this is his poetic translation. It's perhaps a little bit awkward, but. I'm just going to read it the way it is. For over acquisition, one whose mind is always run, avaricious non-devotee, he should thus be known. One who hankers to explode some object mundane, non-devotee over endeavor as such he is known. One whose tongue speaks all but holy talks of Krishna, he is just a gossiper of insignificant banter. Apathetic to devotion, skilled in exploitation, so wretched, proud usurper of the higher devotee's position. Associates with all except Lord Krishna's pure devotees, a mundane socializer in the mud of fleeting fancies. So this was footnoted. So I believe you can take a look at a, a quick translation which says devotion is destroyed by these six defects. Over collection, materialistic endeavor, unnecessary talk, rejecting guidelines met, meant for one's self and following guidelines meant for others, association with non-devotees and fickle-mindedness. And this is such an important verse that we can look at Bhakti Vinod Thakur's commentary. And uh, he says the meaning of this verse is that lust, anger, greed, illusion, intoxication, envy, and all such disturbances constantly arise within the minds of human beings. And we should reject about we should reject those things which are unfavorable. These atyahara, prayas, prajalpo, niyamagraha, janashanga, and lolyam are opposed to bhakti. Adhikara, excuse me, atyahara means to take too much, too much collecting or over endeavoring. Now you can see 
you can see that these things will destroy love. Uh, Atyahara is the opposite of simple living and high thinking. It means you need to collect something for the mission. You need to keep body and soul together. But if you become obsessed with money, 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 and everything becomes money grubbing, that will destroy your mission and it will destroy your bhakti. It's guaranteed. Uh, payas, it means big projects that become so big that they overwhelm your life and you burn out. Um, Niyama Agra is also interesting. Niyama means the rules. So you have to follow the rules. And if you avoid the rules, uh, that won't be good. On the other hand, if you follow the rules simply because you're a rule-following perfectionist, that does not necessarily lead to divine love. So th these are very interesting ideas that need to be studied. Jana Sangha means to associate with persons who are non-devotees. And Lolya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, to associate with various ideologies with wavering conclusions. And that's interesting because I, I always took this to mean greed, to be greedy. But it means greedy not only in the sense of material acquisitiveness, but greedy also for knowledge, the uh, obsession to know everything, to find out everything, to answer every question. So these six things are unfavorable to devotional service. And it's 10 o'clock, so I'm going to stop here. And I'm, I'm sorry, I've just been ranting. I'm not watching the Zoom. I'm looking at my computer screen here, but sometimes I'm speaking spontaneously and sometimes I'm reading. But my discourse has come to an end. So, now, there must be, a, oh, Hare Krishna, was this from Sri Prabhupada Jivanam? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that, there you go. Thanks. I knew you would do that. I didn't have to. I'll read this. This is this is from the Gospel of Luke, and Jesus Christ says, "Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided: three against two, and two against three. They will be divided: father against son, and son." against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So I just took this to mean that those who embrace purely the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ as he enunciates them uh, at the Sermon on the Mount and in his parables, those who follow those closely will find division in their families with those who reject that teaching. And, you know, we see this, there's the Christians and those who stand against the Christians and so on. But my point is, uh, when you really take to a, a deep spiritual discipline, you'll find those who object. High quality rambling. Yes. Yes, I'm a specialist in high quality rambling, but my ramble has a rumbo, as we say. Rumbo means a path. There's a method to my madness. I'm, I'm trying to uh, think about what's unfavorable for it. Krishna Bhakti. And I try to I try to come back to the Loka. But I was taught to speak like this by uh, 
to the Sridhar Maharaj and Bhai. Bhakti Shadir Goswami. Uh, I, I must have listened to, I don't know, a, at least a thousand lectures by Sudhir Goswami. And the lectures of Srila Sridharmarsh, of course, I was the responsible man for uh, creating five of his books, The Search for Sri Krishna, Sri Guru and His Grace, uh, The Golden Volcano of Divine Love, um, the loving search for the lost servant and the subjective evolution of consciousness, which meant I had to listen to hundreds of hours of taped uh, lectures and then extract from them maybe 15 or 20 lectures to create into a book and then listen to each one of those tapes 15, 20, 25 times to extract a transcript and then read the transcripts over and over and over to create the book and then edit the book. That's what I did in consultation with Goswami Maharaj, of course, who told me, never forget, I am the senior editor of Guardian of Devotion Press. And I don't forget that, but I'm just saying, objectively speaking, that was my task. So, high quality rambling. Thank you. I like to think of it as a mind jam. <laughs> but, anyways. But today's lecture was not prepared. I didn't sit down and sometimes I, I try to prepare the talk, you know, and write, actually write something. But this morning I was not preparing. I'm simply re reflecting all those different things that Srila Sridhar says, of course, about rejecting the association of non devotees and so on. Those are very difficult. Given that maybe in India, it's easier. If you're living in Navadweep Dam, you're living in Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri, you can surround yourself with Hare Krishna devotees and only talk to them. But I live in Mexico, so the, the Hare Krishna devotees that I can talk to are in front of me now. Then again, there's an interesting concept to be kept in mind. And that is, if you look at Srila Sridhar Maharaj as an example, he lived in Navadweep Dham. Who was his association? Well, he had Govinda Maharaj, five or six brahmacharis who lived at the Mat, and whoever came to visit him there at the Mat in the last 20 years of his life. And so he was asked about association and what does it mean? And he pointed out, association is not always physical. Sometimes you're keeping com the people you're keeping company with are in your heart. My mother would drive me crazy. She passed away, right? But she's in my heart. I'm always keeping company with her. I'm always, if I'm in the kitchen or something, she'll say, uh, don't put too much salt. You know, why are you putting too, you're eating too much salt. Okay. But she's there. Go Swami Maharaj. I don't get to see him every day. He's a very busy man. He has so many disciples and programs, things all over the world. Avidut Maharaj. But they're in my heart. See? So, any questions or we're out of time? I like questions. Okay, nobody wants to ask any questions.
high quality rambling. I'm keeping to my theme. I'm trying to follow my theme. Okay. There's Ramananda. Hare Krishna, Ramananda. It's good to see you. Hare Bo. There's Scarlet Bloom. That's such a Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's good to see you. How are you? I'm okay going on by <laughs> Guru Dev's mercy. Yeah. Where are you these days? Are you in Thailand or you're in Mexico? I, I live in Mexico, Ramananda. I'm in, I'm in a mountain. Up in the mountains, it's a little town called San Miguel. Anyways, uh -huh. I just want to tell you how much I love you and I miss you and I think you're great. You're doing. I see you sometimes on Facebook and so on. I think you're doing a great job. I remember all those pizzas that you used to make for us back in the <laughs> old days. That was that was the best. You make the best doll, the best prasadam. I know that something that is touched by the hand of Ramananda Prabhu is truly prasadam. So if you if if any of you have the great good fortune to get the association of uh, Ramananda Prabhu, you know, you you should consider yourselves truly blessed. And that's coming from the heart. I'm not just saying that. It's so good to be able to say hello after so many years. But that's what I was saying. I didn't know he was on here, but uh, that's what I was saying. See, I carry Ramananda in my heart. And I think, ah, poor Ramananda, you know. All those days I told him, hey, you need to put more tomato in the pizza. What's going on? You know, I said terrible things. I did terrible things. Uh, I had a big ego back in the day when I was trying to be a sannyasi, but, you know. I tried. So you please forgive me. You please forgive me for my offenses. Okay? No, no offenses, Maharaj. We all make mistakes, like Guru Mai say. To what is human, forgive is divine. We, we all family. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's a, to err is human, to forgive is divine. So you are yeah. more divine than I am because you can no, forgive no, no, better no. than I can forgive no, you. You have so. done so much service. You are my hero. It's just uh, we all go through different changes. I'm lucky to realize I've seen so much. But it's Guru Mai keeping me alive. I don't know what's my purpose. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But every night when I... I go to sleep. I sometimes have difficulty sleeping, thinking about all my uh, sins and how I could have done so much more. But we live in the material world and we do what we can. Anyways, now we've got this sort of a Zoom thing and uh, Braja Sundari is trying to keep us together with her Bhakti Online project. And uh, I'm here to help. So anyways... Wow, it's so good to see you, Ramananda. Uh, I'm I'm going to go because I've been talking too long, and she has other people on here. Uh, Radha Madhava, thank you, and uh, Lilavati, thank you, and Dana K or Donna K, thank you. Dandavat pronouns, Dandavats to all. Okay, and uh, I know you're not supposed to pray, Naratam Nitai Das not to shesh there in Spain. You know, we're not supposed to pray for things. We're not supposed to ask Krishna for anything. But I think we can, as humble Vaishnavas, we can pray for the souls of the other humble Vaishnavas who are out there. Because our prayer is that we want to continue seeing them in the kirtan of Gauranga Mahaprabhu vibrating the holy name of Krishna. So. Let's pray for the souls of Marie Hugoric and Braja Sundari and Jeevan Aditi and Scarlet Bloom and Krishna Chaitanya. And when we say uh, Gora Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai, that's really what we're saying. We're saying all glories to the assembled bhaktas. So to all the devotees present and not present, Gora Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai, Hare Krishna, we'll see you soon.
Джай Махаги Прабу Ки Джай. Yes, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Please accept our blessings. See you next week. Большое спасибо, Hare Krishna. Примите наши поклоны. Увидимся на следующей неделе. Дандавата. Thank you, Marie, for your help. Bye-bye.